what is the current financial situation like at Chelsea Football Club? Well, apparently not very good, even though they've been doing good. Or doing well, performing well, winning European trophies, finishing third, selling expensive players. But what does that really mean? Why has Roman Abramovich put a quarter of a billion pounds into the Chelsea recently out of his own pocket? We thought those days were over. What happened to austerity Chelsea? Well, we're going to get into that today. Mm. It is interesting and it's relevant for all Chelsea fans and indeed people, I guess, just generally interested in football. So stick around for a good one. Oh yeah, before we get into the video, please do subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so and click the bell notifications icon, like the video and remember to comment down below and all that luck. Right, let's get into it. Okay, flashback. Last season, Chelsea sell Morata, Ed Nezard, make loads of money from the loan army general Chelsea revenue of being a big marketable international brand, win the Europa League, finish third, all the stuff that brings in money. But Chelsea have just recently filed the financial report of 2019 and obviously Chelsea finishing third hasn't actually paid dividends in the next financial report yet. So let's take a look. Check this out. Chelsea have published on their website official gear here. The group turnover figure grew to 446.7 million pounds from 443.4 million pounds the previous year. Hmm. So 2017 and 2018, generally very profitable, positive stuff for Chelsea Football Club. Although the last two years at Stamford Bridge had been profitable, in 2019, Chelsea suffered a loss of 96.6 million pounds. Basically 100 million. A gargantuan loss, really, by Chelsea standards in terms of general recent success. But this was reflecting of a number of player acquisitions and those kind of related costs, I guess, as well as the obvious lack of Champions League football and playing in the Europa League. The money, or the difference in money, is gargantuan. Despite suffering a loss in the financial year of 2019, Chelsea are still within regulations of FFP, financial fair play, that's good to hear. But generally, as a rule, Chelsea are pretty sensible with that and always, regardless, make sure they're balancing the books appropriately so they get no knocks on the door. Whenever they do get problems or transfer bans, it's due to re reportedly wrongfully signing young players or whatever it was. Here's some positive news though. Revenue from commercial activities grew by 14.5 million following a signing of several partnership deals including Hyundai, Vitality Health, MSC Cruises, Unlever, Beats by Dre and Millennium and a bunch of corporate deals. Great. Another interesting post by Chelsea here. Broadcasting and match day revenues decreased by 3.9 million and 7.3 million respectively. Primarily as a result of the club's participation in the Europa League as opposed to the Champions League the previous season. Mm. I mean, that's no real surprise there, to be honest. And the big one that we all know about, the club also invested a record of 280.6 million in said financial appearance in the playing squad during the year, including the acquisitions of Kepa Aritha Balaga, 72 million, Christian Pulisic, what, like 57 million, Kovacic and Jorginho, which were both like, what, between 40 and 50 million pound players or something like that. Basically, they spent a lot of money on players in that financial year, which, fair enough, yeah. <laughs> Right, so we know the deal so far. Chelsea bought a load of players, they're no longer in the Champions League, and because of that, they didn't generate the Champions League revenue and match day stuff revenue and all that kind of stuff went down. So Chelsea took a hit, a big financial hit, and Roman Abramovich had to step in and put 247 million, a quarter of a billion of his own money into the club out of another business that he had. So yeah, the BBC reported on this here. Chelsea owner Roman Abramovich paid 247 million into the club last season, but still made an overall loss of 96.6 .6 million like we just discussed from the Chelsea financial report. Another interesting financial loss element of said year is how they had to pay out 26.6 million uh, to Antonio Conte and his backroom staff. And furthermore, a little bit money recently. <laughs> Conte really milking Chelsea for all the money he can. I know it was unfair dismissal. It's been seen as that. And maybe it was, but Conte, man, he was a difficult guy. Obviously, he texted Diego Costa and 
basically said you're not in my plans, do one sort of thing. And really, we all know, come on, Conte threw the towel in in the latter part of his second season. Sure, he went all in on the FA Cup and did a lot of training and drills for the final to make sure he secured his first domestic cup and, you know, two major trophies in two seasons for Chelsea decent but in the league we all know he sacked it in. Also what Chelsea did not publish on the website Chelsea's wage bill increased to 41 million in 2019 despite not playing in the Champions League so their wage bill went up as well. So whether it's buying loads of players sacking Conte and having to pay off everyone and getting into legal battles and then suffering the match day revenue and everything going down Chelsea suffered financially but really this highlights two things for me here firstly Roman Abramovich digging into his personal funds again and forking out quarter of a billion to keep Chelsea competitive I think that speaks volumes firstly it's been going around the rags for the last sort of 18 months or however long how since Roman Abramovich wasn't granted his UK visa how perhaps he had lost interest in Chelsea Football Club how his toy his project was no longer you know something that compelled him maybe simply not true it's just down to the fact how he can't maybe attend games due to it looking like work or certainly it is work because he owns the club I'm sure there's some sort of technical reasons behind it but the truth is Roman Abramovich is indeed still very interested in Chelsea. Sure, we've heard people like Bruce Buck come out and say that recently, and indeed, I think Frank Lampard as well, but really, the financial figures speak for themselves. It doesn't scream of an owner that is happy for the club to descend into mediocrity, or that perhaps he's lost any ambition to win titles, because Chelsea keep winning titles, they're doing well, and to be honest, Roman Abramovich always wanted the Chelsea Academy to succeed. He pumped loads of money into that. And obviously now it's bearing fruit, so really he should be happier than ever in terms of what's happening with Chelsea. Oh yeah, another thing is about withdrawing the stadium plans for a redeveloped Stamford Bridge, but that may return and come round again in the next few years. Another thing that I got from these financial reports that I thought were really important and interesting is the whole top four thing. As a fan, you wanna win trophies. This is why Chelsea perhaps, you know, I say laughed at Arsenal because they did win FA Cups, but you know, perhaps there was that sort of joke that Arsene Wenger would always secure top four and see it as a trophy. <laughs> when the truth is, top four would earn the club far more money than a trophy. You could win an FA Cup, a Europa League, a League Cup. You don't really get any finances for it. Fans like it and players like it because players still get paid the same. They just want to lift silverware in their career in the same sort of way fans just want to see them lift silverware in their career. You know, it's that fan and player culture of wanting to win, but in terms of clubs, their businesses, they want to make money. So really the top four is probably a lot better for clubs than winning any sort of trophy. So really often that's a priority, but hadn't necessarily been a priority for Chelsea because money had never really been an issue for Chelsea. I mean, I mean, obviously it's long since been when Roman Abramovich touched down in London and broke football with his spending and financial fair plays come in, obviously. But generally, Chelsea have won. They've had the money to back up their financial fair play because they're a big brand. You know, they have a lot of revenue. So it all kind of works out. I mean, look at Manchester United. Not won anything in ages, but still, and you know, often not finishing in the top four either, but they never really breach financial fair play because they make so much money as a brand, you know, as a sort of product. Of course, Chelsea aren't as big as Manchester United in terms of a brand or product, but they're still massive. So often they can suffer uh, certain losses and they can be okay and they can still be safely within the FFP regulations. I think in many ways this is why Manchester City uh, were being investigated because in terms of like an international brand, Manchester City aren't as big as Chelsea. Um, you know, I don't think they make too much from match day revenue and stuff like that, but obviously their owners were putting a lot of money into the club. That's why Manchester United can spend as much as they want and be fine and Manchester City can spend you know, a lot of money and not necessarily not be fine as well. You catch my drift. Anyway, it's an interesting subject and talking point and I think Chelsea will have to be really, 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 really gunning that they get top four this season, not just for the finances moving forward so they can look to turn a profit again, but also to bring in these superstar reinforcement players that they probably need to be challenging for a title again in the coming transfer window in the summer. Anyway, what do you guys think? What do you think of Roman Abramovich's dedication to Chelsea? How do you see Chelsea moving 
in the next year or so, do you reckon they can bring in the players, up the finances and revenue to become a powerhouse like Liverpool and City and whatever, people like that? Get down in the comments and let me know. Also, go support my second channel, Jan's Yard. Link in the top of the description. Why not come follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick. Got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I laugh me, baby.